Hello everyone, this is Gail, and today I'm just going to show you just a fun thing to do. Uh, you know I've been telling you I've been trying to get rid of my scrap and my scrap canes, and I thought about something today that I hadn't done in, oh goodness, a long time. But I rolled out some black clay on the number four setting of the pasta machine. And I'm going to set two of them aside. I'll get to them one at a time. Alright, so I've got a number four sheet of black. And I've got this conglomeration of scrap canes. You can see there's a flower cane, there's some bullseye canes, there's a petal cane, there's a leaf cane, just, and they, this is just some blends that were left over. Let me get rid of that little piece there. And what I'm doing is I'm pressing it into a square And it doesn't really matter what order they're in or anything. Just whatever is pleasing to you. But press them together and then press them into a square. Now this is a little bit difficult for me because this is Kato clay. And these canes have been sitting for probably 15 years. But as you can see, they're still, still working. It's just going to take a little longer to get them flattened out. Now let's see what my cane looks like. Alright, that's kind of interesting. You say, well, what are you going to do with this? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to cut a fairly thick, maybe a quarter of an inch slice of this. Let me just move this over just for a minute. And I'm going to take my, pasta, my acrylic rod and I'm going to roll it until it's... Let me get my canes out of the way. I'm going to roll it in each direction until it's a little bit more workable and also um, will fit through my pasta machine. And I may end up cutting this part off because it's kind of too much solid clay. But we'll see how it works. But you can see that the, um, the pieces are, are kind of all blending together, which is fine. All you want is color. So now I'm going to roll this through the thickest setting of my pasta machine. I'm going to take it down to the number two. And when I'm doing this, I'm turning it so that no one side gets flattened anymore. I'm going to go down to a three. And see, and I'm going to go down to a four. So you wonder, what in the world are you going to do with all with that color? Well, this is called faux mosaics. It's when we're finished, it's going to look like a mosaic project, but yet it's done with just scrap. Or if you want to plan your cane, you can do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. Um, all right, I've got this. I'm sorry, I almost skipped a step. I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it on my first black sheet. Make sure there's no air. And then I'm going to roll this. Actually, let me trim this just a little bit. Because black is a color I can always use.
And I'm going to roll this through the pasta machine now at the number four, which is going to spread it out even more. Okay, now let's see how I'm going to do this. I might do it this way. So now I'm going to cut a straight edge. And I'm going to get out my second black sheet. And I'm going to stick that down on my work surface. And I'm going to make sure this is stuck down on my work surface. And I'm going to, let's see. I probably should go a little bit wider, but that's okay. I'm going to take these two and make a wider sheet just because this ended up being wider than I expected. So let me do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, I made this a little bit wider. And again, I'm sticking my, making sure my colored one is stuck down. I'm going to take a stiff blade, and this is a stiff blade as opposed to a flexible blade. This is a flexible blade. See how much it bends? This one doesn't bend as much. <clears throat> but I'm going to take a thin piece, and it, well, it depends. Let me do mine a little bit thicker just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to cut this, pull it away from the um, colored sheet. It's going to stick to my blade, and I'm going to take it and put it down on the black. That keeps it straight. It's easier to move. And I'm going to keep doing this. And you can choose to be symmetri symmetrical or not, but I'm going to leave a little bit of a black space between these. And you can alternate your colors if you want, but I think at this point I'm just going to leave the colors the way they are. When I say alternate, you could have turned them one to the other, but I'm just going to leave it this way. But you just leave a little, oops, that fell off, a little bit of space. between rows and you do this all the way across and I'll probably have enough to do two of these this is a good thing to do when you're stuck in the house because of the rain or if you're having creative block and you don't know what to do, and I have a little piece of green that fell off here and I don't want that on my black. I'll just push it up next to that and it probably won't make any difference in the end, but for right now I want it to look fairly straight. And you just keep doing this all the way across this piece of black clay. And you can do a couple at a time like I'm doing, just place them down. And take your finger and just go over it to make sure it's flat. And I think I only have room for one more. Okay, 
I'm going to keep this because you never know when you might need another slice. But I'm going to take this and take it up from my work surface now. And I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. And I'm going to bring out my other, my next piece of black. And I'm going to cut this uneven edge off. And I'm going to do the same thing. Only this time you're taking little squares and putting it on your black clay. And like I say, you can make them square, you can make them rectangle, you can bar jello them a little bit if you want to um, alternate the color. There's so many different things you can do, but I'm just leaving this design just because I thought it was an interesting design to begin with. This one got pushed over a little bit. Let's see if I can push it back without messing things up too, mad, too badly. But especially if you end up with, like this being a graphic with the leaf and then the flowers. If you wanted to do a mosaic that was a leaf and flowers, of course you would leave it the way it is. I would take a longer piece of clay because this one isn't going to be long enough to get the leaf, I'm afraid. But you'll get the flowers. Flowers. <laughs> And there's so many things you can do with this. You can make a little bowl, you know, to put your clay things in. Not your raw clay, but your, your other clay. Yeah, I'm not going to get to my leaf, I'm afraid, on this one. So maybe just a little tad bit on this end. I'll do one more that I can hopefully stick here even though it's not got a base. So if I were going to do a bowl I would probably just roll over this lightly with my rod, my roller, just to make sure everything is stuck and leave it because it's on, you've got a number four setting on a number four setting on a number four setting. So this is like three of the number four settings thick. So and it's black on the back so you could take this and bend it up to make a little bowl shape I'm going to you can leave it like this which I like the texture but I'm going to take it and roll it through the pasta machine and I'm going to go back to my thickest setting and I'm going to roll this way actually this one ended up not having too much space between it See how easy it is to fix? But I'm going to roll it through this way on the number one. And 
you can see it elongated it that way. So now I'm going to turn it this way and put it through the number two. And you see it spreads it out a little bit, but this would be a good thing to use for a bracelet, a pendant, um, pendant and earring set. There's so many things because it's not as thick. You can put it on whatever backing that you want. But I just wanted to show you this. Um, it's just, like I said, a quick technique that you can use. You can use solid colors of clay. You don't have to use scraps. I just use my scrap canes. I've got some more over here which are the other half of the ones that I put together a little while ago. So I could make another one, but it won't be exactly the same because I won't have my clay in the same, unless I made them at the same time, I wouldn't have had them together. But that's a faux mosaic technique that you can use with your polymer clay. Now, I'm not going to make anything out of this today because I'm not sure what I want to do with it. Um, I kind of like the whole idea of a bowl. Well, let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to take this, which is the scraps. Let me roll the black together. I'm just going to kind of marble it a little bit. Let me let that sit for a minute. Let me cut this into a because I'll have some more scrap. Cut this into a more pleasing shape. And you can stretch it a little bit because you can see this ended up not being quite square. But that's okay. It's clay. You can you are the boss of the clay. Who says that? Teresa? I think it's Teresa. You are the boss of the clay. I'm going to cut off this little extra black here. And I don't know that that's even. It looks like it's a little bit wider at the top. Or it might just be an optical illusion because of the way the squares are. Let me see. I have got just shy of four inches there and just shy of four inches there. So it's an optical illusion. It really is square. Okay, so I'm going to take the scrap. And the reason I'm using the scrap instead of using these extra canes is that this is already conditioned and the others aren't. And I don't want to use unconditioned clay. So I'm just going to twist it a little bit. Like I said, I want to marble it. There's a lot of black in there, which is okay. I'm going to flatten it out. and cut it into fourths. Then I'm going to roll, isn't that interesting? Isn't it pretty? I'm going to try to get that on the outside. I'm going to roll these into balls. which are going to be the feet for my bowl. That noise you hear is my fur baby playing with his big old bone. You see, rolling it out and cutting your bead into four equal parts assures you that your legs are all going to be the same size. Okay, 
Okay, so now I've got four legs. Now what am I going to use to shape this? Because I want it shaped like this. I want the outside to be black. So how about... Let's see, what do I have that's big and round? I should have a bowl somewhere. I've got these that I got from Donna Cato. And I will put, oh, what will I put? Maybe a piece of patty paper because I don't want it to be shiny. Put this face down in the center. And make sure that the four corners put one there. easier for me to place them once I got it on here. You might want to do this on your flat surface. And I'm just going to push this down. I'm not going to push the other side down because I don't want it to be round. I just want it to be cupped. And that will just go up just a little bit. And I'm going to bake this and I'll be back to show you my finished result. Okay, I have taken my little thing out of the oven. Let's see what it looks like. There you go. Just a little, not flat, but a semi-flat dish that you can sit you can put your rings in it. You can put your watch if you still wear a watch. There's so many things you can do for the, with this. So I hope you like it. Um, I think I do. I like it. If you wanted to, it is pretty flexible. So if you wanted a little bit more sturdy dish, you could probably back it with another sheet of black or whatever color you wanted to put on the back. And... Um, just go from there. So hope you enjoyed this. I'll talk to you soon. Come back again for another polymer clay video. Bye-bye.